Everyone involved in the manufacture and processing of FDA-regulated products has the responsibility to do their best to ensure that every product we manufacture is safe, pure, effective, and of the highest possible quality. In our plant, we carry out this responsibility each day by doing our jobs to the best of our abilities and by carefully following our written procedures. But we're not the only ones concerned with the health of our customers. The Food and Drug Administration, the FDA, also has this responsibility. And one of the ways the FDA works is to inspect food, drug, medical device manufacturers, and other healthcare organizations, such as blood banks, to determine the quality of manufacturing and control practices. These controls and practices are established in a government regulation called Good Manufacturing Practice. The Good Manufacturing Practice Regulation establishes minimum standards for the manufacture of our products to assist in preventing adulteration. But more importantly, good manufacturing practice needs to be a lifestyle that each company clearly defines and implements through its quality system in order to protect the health and safety of its customers. Let's focus on how the 10 principles of good manufacturing practice will help to make GMP a lifestyle in our plant. Principle number one, writing step-by-step -step operating procedures and work instructions that provide a roadmap for GMP compliance and controlled and consistent performance. Principle number two, carefully following our written procedures and instructions to prevent contamination, mix-ups, and errors. Principle number three, promptly and accurately documenting our work for compliance and traceability. Principle number four, proving that our systems do what they are designed to do by validating our work. Principle number five, integrating productivity, product quality, and employee safety into the design and construction of our facilities and equipment. Principle number six, properly maintaining our facilities and equipment. Principle number seven, clearly defining, developing, and demonstrating job competence. Principle number eight, protecting our products against contamination by making cleanliness and hygiene a daily habit. Principle number nine, building quality into our products by systematically controlling our components and product-related processes, such as manufacturing, packaging and labeling, testing, distribution, and marketing. And finally, principle number 10, conducting planned and periodic audits for compliance and performance. These 10 principles of GMP provide us with a perfect framework for building and implementing a GMP lifestyle and evaluating how well we are living up to the standards of good manufacturing practice. The first two GMP principles stress the importance of written procedures. The best way to comply with GMP is to have well-written procedures and to carefully follow them. The heart of GMP is the establishment of well-written procedures for each operation. These written procedures give us the controls necessary to minimize the chance of mix-ups and errors in manufacturing our products. When we carefully follow our written procedures, we not only ensure compliance with the GMP regulation, but more importantly, we ensure the consistent quality of our products. The next two GMP principles stress the need for us to document and validate our work. Because documentation and validation are so important to us and to our company, let's look at them more closely. We may begin by asking, what does documentation really mean in terms of our job performance? Well, documentation requires a specific action on our part, the recording of each significant step we perform as we complete a job task. Documentation should be made promptly and accurately and in accord with our written procedures. As important as documentation is, it shows only that we have carefully and exactly followed our written procedures. Validation is proactive proof that we can produce safe and effective products. Validation requires a series of tests to assure that our systems and processes do what we say they do. 
We must be sure our production processes consistently meet the specifications our company has established. Therefore, validation gives meaning to the documented records we keep. It is validation which tells us that our written procedures are correct and that our products are truly safe and effective. GMP principles 5 and 6 focus on the design, construction, and maintenance of our facilities and equipment. Let's take a look at how GMP relates to the place where we work and the equipment we use. Our key concern is to avoid the possibility of contamination, mix-ups, and errors in our workplace. For example, we keep certain areas such as the cafeteria, locker room, and restrooms separated from the manufacturing area. Where necessary to protect the integrity of our products, we carefully control water, air, temperature, and humidity. Housekeeping, sanitation, and maintenance also function to defend against contamination, mix-ups, and errors. The seventh GMP principle states that good manufacturing practice requires competent people, people who can do the job right the first time and every time. That means it's our personal responsibility to develop, demonstrate, and continuously improve our job competence. In order to do any job well, we must be properly trained, and this is particularly true in the manufacturing and quality control areas. In fact, our company must have a formal training program to assure that each employee can competently perform assigned job responsibilities. And that leads to our eighth GMP principle, which focuses on cleanliness and requires us to be constantly on guard to defend our products against contamination. Contamination can be a powerful and dangerous enemy which takes on many different forms. One of the most common forms is particulate contamination. This simply means that a product has been made impure by any particle that doesn't belong in it. For example, dust, dirt, lint, fibers, and hair are all potential causes of particulate contamination. That's why we must be properly dressed to prevent contamination when working with our materials, components, and products. The second form of contamination is microbial contamination. This is caused by microscopic organisms known as microbes. Microbes are living organisms that exist on everything in the environment that has not been sterilized and include organisms such as fungus, mold, bacteria, and viruses. A third form of contamination is cross-contamination. Cross-contamination occurs when traces of other materials, components, and products adulterate or misbrand the products we are currently manufacturing, packaging, or testing. So it's critical that we practice good personal hygiene and help keep our workplace clean by reporting any condition or practice in our plant or with our equipment that might be a potential source of particulate, microbial, or cross-contamination. The ninth GMP principle focuses our attention on the importance of building quality into our products by systematically controlling our components and product-related processes. To see how GMP helps us build in quality, let's examine the critical areas where we must establish effective controls. Materials and components present the first critical control challenge. We must be sure all of our components and materials satisfy our quality standards. Upon receipt, they must be carefully examined for damage and contamination, properly identified and tagged, and promptly stored in a quarantined area. Where required, certain components and materials must be sampled and tested to ensure that they meet established standards of identity, quality, and purity. Only after approval are they released to manufacturing and used on a first-in, first-out basis. That is, the first materials and components approved for release are the first to go to manufacturing. The second critical area we must control is the manufacturing process itself. To assure quality and uniformity of each product, we have master records that outline the specifications and manufacturing procedures, individual batch or history records to help us document our conformance to the master record, and written schedules and procedures for cleaning and maintaining our equipment. To help us operate in a state of control, we carefully follow written work instructions, accurately collect critical data, and promptly document manufacturing results. 
Packaging and labeling is the third critical area where we control for quality. We must inspect the packaging and labeling area before each new lot or batch is processed to help us assure that the packaging equipment is clean and that the area does not contain any packaging or labeling materials from a previous run. The fourth critical area, testing, supports all other areas of control. How we handle incoming, in-process and finished product test samples, how we perform test methods, and how we document test results are all significant elements of the testing process and must be performed by qualified individuals. The final critical area of control focuses on how we assure the safety, effectiveness, and purity of our products as they enter the marketplace. The challenge to control for quality does not end when the finished product is tested and released. We must carefully control the product as we warehouse and distribute it to our customers. We must closely monitor the sales and marketing strategies we use to interact with our customers. And we must keep accurate records to provide product traceability and promptly respond to any customer problems, concerns, or complaints. The tenth and final GMP principle entails the need to continually audit our day-to-day -day job performance and verify that we are in compliance with the Good Manufacturing Practice Regulation. FDA has a major responsibility to externally audit our manufacturing operations to see if we are in compliance with the current GMP regulation. But it's our company's responsibility to internally ensure the integrity of our products, and most importantly, it's our personal responsibility to evaluate how well we are living up to the standards of GMP by performing a self-audit using the 10 principles of good manufacturing practice, you can help make GMP a daily lifestyle at our company and not just a regulation. In addition to our responsibilities to our customers, the FDA also has a responsibility to protect the consumer. In fact, the FDA can recommend a recall of a product if they find one of our products are contaminated, mislabeled, or if our products are not manufactured in compliance with the current good manufacturing practice regulation. So it's extremely important that we carefully follow the 10 principles of good manufacturing practice. At our company, we are all concerned about what we do and how we do it. This concern for quality helps us earn the trust of the millions of people who use our products. It's our job to make GMP a lifestyle and live the principles of GMP each and every day.